Okay, so <clears throat> solving rational equations. So anytime in math you hear or you read this word solve, um, solve the equation, or solve for x. What you really got to remember is what they're asking you to do is they're asking you to get x on one side all by itself. So then get everything else on the other side. So um, the idea behind solving this, if I were to solve this equation that I have up here, I'm going to get x all by itself and, and on one side of the equation. It doesn't matter if it's on the left side or the right side. Um, but but in the end, you just want to get it all back, um, all by itself. So take this equation. So I got this equation, 7 over 5x minus 6 equals 2 over 2x minus 5. Now, if you look at this, the, the thing that maybe freaks you out about this and it maybe freaks most people out about this, is this fractions. So the best thing to do is to get rid of the fraction. And the way you want to get rid of the fraction is you want to multiply both sides by that denominator. So if I multiply this side by 5x minus 6, I need to multiply this side by 5x minus 6. Now that will get rid of it from that side. But then I often multiply both sides by 2x minus 5 as well. But remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Notice that they'll go, that goes away on the right side. So in the end, after I've done this, what I have is I have 2x minus 5 times 7 on the left side, and I have 2 times 5x minus 6 on the right side. And now this is really an Algebra 1 type problem where we just have to do some distributive and combining like terms and moving things around. So if I distribute this 7 through, this is 14x minus 35 is equal to, if I distribute this 2 through, 10x minus 12. So now I'm going to get all the x's on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 10x on this side, subtract 10x on this side. It means I got 4x here. This is away. If I add 35 to this side, then I got to add 35 to this side. So I get 4x is equal to 23. And then this is away. And so x is equal to 23 over 4. And as long as I didn't make an arithmetic mistake, if I go to 23 divided by 4, should get that answer. They talk about cross multiplying in there, but um, I'm not going to talk about cross multiplying. I'm going to talk about the way I did it. Um, I think it's 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 cross multiplying. Oftentimes, students don't understand what the heck they even did. So that's that first type of problem. Now. Um, let's look at the second type of problem. We're going to do the same thing, but when we get done with the second grouping of problems, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to solve a quadratic equation using factoring. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by whatever that denominator is. Sorry, that's x minus 2. So then if I multiply both sides by x, look what happens is on this, whoops, on this side, those go away, and on this side, those go away, and now we don't have that fraction anymore. So what we have on this side is x minus 2 times x minus 9 is equal to negative 2 times x. And now I have to do some foiling and I have to 
rearrange it, and solve it. So if I FOIL this out, the first times the first is x squared. The outside times the outside is minus 9x. The inside is minus 2x. And the last is plus 18 equals negative 2x. So if I add 2x to both sides, and I combine all the like terms, I got x squared minus 9x plus 18 equals 0. Now if I factor this, x minus 3 times x minus 6, so x can equal 3 or x can equal 6. And when we put those in over here, we can put in 3. And you can either hit this plus, that will give you another answer, or you can just hit a comma. Hit a comma, that gives you another answer. And then I can put in 6. And hopefully if I didn't do anything, arithmetic mistakes. And they'll go through and show you how to do it um, also. All right, so let's look at the next grouping of problems. Something like this. It may look really scary, but it won't be if you follow these directions. So got negative 5 over 3 plus x plus 3 over x equals 7 over 3x. So the best thing to do is if you multiply, you can um, what you want to do is you want to multiply by what's called the least common multiple or the common denominator. Notice that the common denominator in this is 3x. Okay, so the common denominator, or what we can get to be the common denominator, would be 3x. So if we multiply everything by 3x, so if I multiply everything in the top by 3x, everything on this side by 3x. Think about what would happen on that. So if I multiplied it but didn't, didn't do any, um, so I take this and I'm going to multiply it through here and I'm just going to write it. So I got 3x times negative 5 over 3 plus 3x times x plus 3 over x equals 7 times 3x over 3x. Now here's the key. If you've done that right, if you've multiplied by that least common multiple or what I would call the common denominator and you've multiplied everything by it, what happens is you get some reduction. Notice that these 3's go away there. These x's go away there. This 3 goes away there, and so does this x. So then you essentially have got, have eliminated the fractions from here. What you still have is you still have x times negative 5. You still have x plus 3 here. And you still have 7 here. But we don't have fractions anymore. So we have negative 5x plus x plus 3 equals 7. So we have negative 4x plus 3 equals 7 when we combine like terms. So negative 4x is equal to 4. So x is equal to negative 1. And if we put in negative 1 in here, hopefully if I didn't do any, if I make a mistake on, What I made where I, where I lost a negative on there. Somehow lost a negative on there, and I don't know where. So 
So I made a, made a mistake on the negative somewhere in there. So let me do another one just to make sure that you see it. I don't know where it is, but let's take this one. So 2 over 5 plus 3 over x is equal to 3x plus 6 over 5x. So notice that the, the least common denominator is that 5x. So if I multiply everything up here by 5x, I gotta multiply everything here by 5x. What I have is I have 5x times 2 over 5 plus 5 times x times 3 over x is equal to 3x plus 6 times 5x over 5x. Again, I'm still getting that reduction. Those go away. X's go away. And that goes away. And so what I'm left with on here is I'm left with 2x plus 15 is equal to 3x plus 6. So if I subtract 2x from both sides, subtract 6 from both sides, what I'm left with is x over here. And over here, I'm left with 9. So let's make sure I did that right. So there's that one. So I must have made a negative mistake. Maybe you even saw it in there somewhere. Apologize for that, but, but now you know how to do that type of problem. And you saw two of them. It was the same process. Um, the last one is something like this. And we're going to do the same kind of thing on this. Again, kind of the theme on this whole thing is to get rid of the fraction in whatever way we can. And it's really multiplying by the denominator that is there. So notice that we have that same denominator. So we're going to multiply everything by that value. So we're going to multiply everything by x plus 6. Now we have to multiply everything in this new book in the top here. And if we multiply that, we multiply this by x plus 6. What happens is those clearly go away over there. And all we have is 6 on that side. On the other side, when we distribute that to there and to there, what we would have is we would have x plus 6 times negative x over x plus 6 minus 1 times x plus 6. So we're, I'm going to have to deal with the ne the, the, um, that negative that I'm going to have to go through, but these go away. And what I end up having on this is I have negative x. If I distribute this negative 1 through, I'd have minus x minus 6 equals 6. So take a look at that, and i got to distribute that negative 1 through. Negative 2x minus 6 equals 6 when I combine like terms. If I add 6 to both sides, I've got negative 2x is equal to 12. Divide by negative 2, got x equals negative 6, and hopefully that works out. Now what happens is if I put in negative 6, I want you to look over here and, and notice if I put in negative 6, we, we're going to have a we're going to have an issue on this. And so when when I go through this, notice that when when I put in that negative 6 in here, I got a I, I got a 0 on the bottom, and that's bad. Anytime you have 0 on the bottom, that's not a good thing. So go back to the original thing and notice that if I put this, this would make a zero on the bottom of the original problem up here. This original problem right there makes a zero on the bottom and that's a problem. So maybe let me try one more to make sure that you see what I'm what happens here. Let's take this one, see if this one works out. 
it's the same kind of problems, but, um, and if you need more help, we can go over it more with you, but I've got x minus 5 plus 3 equals 5x, and I have that x minus 5. So clearly the denominator that i got to get rid of is that x minus 5. So if I multiply everything in here by x minus 5, and it's always decent to surround those with parentheses. If I do that, notice I didn't change the equation because I multiplied both sides by the same thing. These go away. On the other side, I have x minus 5 times 1 over x minus 5. Plus, because I have to distribute it to that one and to that one. Plus 3 times x minus 5 equals 5x. I still have 5x over there. Notice these go away. So now what I have is I have 1 plus, if I distribute this through, 3x minus 15 equal to 5x. Combine like terms, 3x minus 14 is equal to 5x. Subtract 3x from this side, so I subtract 3x from this side. Negative 14 is equal to 2x. Divide by 2, x is equal to negative 7. And that's not going to cause a problem over here because that's not going to make a denominator 0. And hopefully I did everything right. There you go. So that's that one. Okay, so just make sure it doesn't make the denominator equal to 0. Let me know if you need any more help. That's, that's all the examples I have for you today.